Performing online research can be a long and arduous process. In this video, we will see how using Stack AI, you can build an online research assistant for business intelligence using language models and internet search. Let's get to it. We will be exploring the story of a company called Express Logistics Solutions, a fictional company that must understand the state of the logistics space across the United States and contrast it with its internal operations. This requires being able to browse the internet, look at their internal knowledge base, and following very concrete guidelines about their business, construct reports, and help business analysts within the, the, within the company understand and craft strategy for the business. Let's get to it. To start assembling this project, we will go ahead and start building it together. We will need an input and an output for our user message and the assistant response. Then we will need a language model. In this case, we will use an OpenAI model in particular GPT-4. However, this can be easily replaced by other models from Anthropic, Replicate, Hugging Face, or even dedicated instances for language models hosted in Azure or AWS Bedrock. And then we're gonna need the ability to load a knowledge base and browse the web. For that, we will add a knowledge base of documents with all the relevant documentation of their business, which can come also from a website, different tables, their Notion database or the Google Drive, or even their cloud storage. And finally, the ability to browse the web, for which we will go to our data loader section and add an integration to do Google search. With this, we have all the key components to run this process. We just need to start connecting the user message to search on the company's knowledge base, then use that same message to perform a Google search and send the response of both the Google search and the knowledge base query to the language model and finally, send the response of the language model into the output message. Once this is done, we just need to configure these blocks. We will configure the Google search block to receive five answers. We'll configure our model to use GPT-4. And then we will finalize by prompting it according to the rules we need on how it should respond to this, to this query. Set up. Let's just start setting up a prompt for this model. Let's go to our GPT-4 instance and start configuring it. The first component of the prompt of the model is the system prompt. This tells it how to behave, how to answer questions, and what is purpose. So let's start writing it in plain English. And now with our system prompt fully configured, the LLM knows how it must analyze things. Now, we have two inputs to, the, to this LLM. The first input coming from the knowledge base, document plus search, called docm0, and the second source coming from the Google search node called SERP API 0. To configure it, we just need to go to the main prompt and tell it, use context from the following knowledge base. With all this set up together, we just need to connect the input to the language model and we will have our search assistant completely set up to analyze and answer questions about the business. With the system fully set up, we can still make some tweaks to significantly improve the performance and the experience that the company will receive from their agent. Let's start with the OpenAI model. The first step we can do is go to the settings of the model and enable memory. By enabling memory, we will enable the language model to keep track of the conversation and remember the past few messages it had with the user. Memory is dependent per user and it is easily transitive as the conversation goes on. The sliding window input remembers the last 10 messages from the input in zero instead of remembering the entire prompt, which is way more efficient. Secondly, if you are in the team plan, you can add citations to your LLM such that it provides sources from where they got the information for its answer and give you useful links to get them as well. Then let's go to configure our Google search node. As mentioned, this Google search node will return too much text for the language model, which will make it hard to process and will may lead to errors since it may be more text than the one than what the model may support. To solve this, we can add a dynamic vector store 
a node that takes all the text from the Google search and selects just the most relevant pieces before sending them to a language model, which is more efficient, consumes less text, and ends up, ends up being faster at deployment. We will add our basic vector database and then rewire our system such that the app of Google search goes to this basic data database. And as we rank in criteria, we use the user message to find what's the most relevant answer towards that. And then send the other the response to the LLM. Notice we will have to modify the prompt because instead of calling directly Google search node, we will call the output of this vector database. Then as mentioned, the input to this vector database may not necessarily be the best criteria for a Google search. So we will need some sort of translation in the middle. To reorganize our node, we will remove this input from the user from the Google search node. We will add a translator in the middle. We will go to our large language model section and pick up an anthropic model in order to take the user question coming here from in zero and convert it into a Google search criteria. Just connect the input here and set up a prompt that has this transformation embedded and give it just a simple task. A simple task, we will just go to the prompt of this model and configure to tell it, you translate And we will give it concrete examples as to how to answer. And finally, give it a specific thing it needs to translate. Notice this model will perform better if we give it concrete memory so it can remember the specific actions of what it did and what the user said. So we will also enable memory type. And we will pick a model of Cloud Instant 1 which is much faster for analyzing this type of requests. Finally, let's go to our documents and get ready to publish. Let's go to document plus search and pick three documents that will be relevant to help our model from some annual reports, some service overviews, and a report on the state of the company. We'll upload this and index them into the knowledge base or doc plus search. Once they are done indexing, we can go Give it a test message, hello, and test our system to see how it behaves. And now that everything is set up, we see it's perfect and running. Then go ahead and publish it. And then move to export it. For our use case, we will be more helpful to have a chat interface in which our engineers and people in the company can easily research information about the business. For that, we will choose a chat interface and open the URL so we can share with our team. We can give a name to this URL, specifically research assistant. We can give it a password for sharing with other people in the company. And we can style it according to our needs. If we want to change the color, icon URL, or a welcome message. Hello. I am here to help you assist, to help you research. And give it some options to generate clear chat or even have the option of the users giving feedback or have a custom branding or color. Then we have URLs to manage the history of this conversation or see its performance. We can then open the chat interface and interact with it in a more friendly fashion that can be easily shared across our organization. We will be testing this chatbot with two key use cases. First, verifying internal information about the company. And second, doing some online research about what reports say about the industry. Let's start. We can see that by looking at the annual reports that we uploaded to our knowledge base, it managed to detect the growth that we saw over the past few years. Now, using our internet access, we can compare by how this, this uh, contrasts to the rest of the industry. And then, now that we have concrete data from the reports, we can also go and ask questions about what industry leaders say about this or what major consulting firms copine. 
And with that, we have shown how our AI research assistant can look at information for our knowledge base, contrast it with online information, provide us with helpful sources and, and links so that we can learn more about the industry and share it with the rest of our company to help us organize projects, share the insights about the business, and forecast how it should grow compared to the rest of the market. Now, we have seen the power of building AI-enabled assistance for research that now can assist every part in your organization become smarter much faster. If you want to jump in and start building today, you can do so by joining at www.stack-ai.com or visiting the links below to learn more how to replicate this tutorial and make the most out of your usage of Stack AI. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much.